Oh. Uh-oh. 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 Who's that, Ness? Oh, the Filipino Flash. What's up, champ? What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Oh, man, happy to have you in studio. Thank uh, you, thank you. So stuck. Okay, there we go. All right. No need to donate in the building, champ. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> no, thanks for having me, man. No, thank you for coming back and, uh, you know, sitting in the hot seat with us. So how's Vegas treating you? I mean, great. I mean, I've been here for, for quite some time now. I think 10 years or so. Wow. So I, I love it out here. So the heat never bothered you? I mean, I'm, I'm in the sauna most of the time, man. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, when I had moved to Florida and people was like, oh, you're not going to like the heat. And I just figured like, man, I'm, my car has AC. The house has AC. Wherever I'm going usually has AC. Do you right. find like you actually feel the heat out here? I mean, when you go out there, you know, like on the summertime where it hits like nine, uh, 119 or something, you know. Man, 119. Yeah, so you'll feel the heat coming at you, but... I mean, it doesn't really bother me, you know. I mean, like like you said, I'm I'm mostly inside the house. You know, what I'm saying if I'm out there picking up the kids and stuff like that, it hurts, it burns, you know. But I mean, I I it's it's it, it too shall pass kind of thing, you know. Like where I'm there, I feel it, but it doesn't bother me. Mm. And do you still do road work in when it's that hot, or do you? Just I don't probably do, do tre uh, the, the treadmill. Crazy, the crazy thing is, I don't do road work. So you don't run. I don't run. That's so crazy. You know, Deontay Wilder revealed that before the Fury fight. It was something I knew for a long time. He had let me go to at least seven training camps. And uh, when he revealed that, obviously everyone pointed to that in his fight saying, oh, he is fatiguing and it's because he doesn't run, because he doesn't do jump rope. So what are you doing to, I guess, stimulate what would be the running? I mean, it's more like strength and conditioning. You know, things that we use inside that ring um we uh we do like uh hit work you know hit workout where high intensity high, training, yes, training? Yeah, okay yeah. so we we do um um i don't know either kettlebell or even uh, uh plyometrics you know given the 2010 kind of setup where we're going all out 20 seconds we're resting for 10 and then we're going all out because the boxing boxing is you're not running you know for 60 60 minutes or or more you know, it's it's it doesn't work that way. It's 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 a burst, burst of, of of punches, burst of energy. You know, and then you get to hang out here and there, look around, move around. But that's that's the that's the um that's how boxing work. It's it's like a sprint. So you've never ran, or you do do sprints at least. Then. I do sprints. I okay. do sprints. You know, um, I used to run a lot. I mean, there was a time when. I think I was 12 years old. My pops would um, would wake me up at 4:30 in the morning before school. We'd run for six miles. Wow! You know, every day was like that, except for for the weekends. And and um, and I used to wake up with lots of joint aches. You know, yeah, man. My knees are, are messed up. My back is messed up. You know, um, going up the stairs would be painful. And then I just stopped doing it. You know, I just stopped doing it. And, and figure how long out has it been since you? eliminated running from your training camps what year do you remember man i i, I probably in 2010 or so 20 you know something like that wow yeah so that's before the darchinian fight yeah. no it was after the darchinian fight i fought him in 2007 and i met oh my god my, Has it you been know that long? i met my wife and she did a lot of plyometric work with me and stuff like that and, and a lot of uh a lot of that uh strength and conditioning kind of thing because they did it in taekwondo you know and it made sense to me it made sense to me that you're doing this kind of work outside, but you can utilize it inside the ring. Now, when I'm running, I use it. I used to just still run, but not as much. You know, um, at, at least uh, 45 to, to an hour, right? Um, when I'm running, you know, even till this day, I would warm up running. You know, um, like in a treadmill or something for about 10 minutes, and then I'll do a sprint in there. You know, so doing it in the in the long run the long distance is 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 where it takes toll on your body mm, so not even no mountain work for that elevation obviously we are in vegas everybody may not love it but it seems like all boxers do run mount charleston so not even not even like the once a week mount charleston run for you champ i used to i'm the actually i'm the first first person to run out there i'm the one that introduced it to everybody mm. You know, um, back 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 in the days, you know, um, uh, I don't know how long it was. Um, I'd I'd used to run once or twice just to get up there, but now I just realized that you know what, 
it's all in the mind now. You know, when you train your mind, when you train your body physically, everything else is 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 how your mind is working. You know, um, I think that's where that's where um, you can fight at your best. Because I mean, you know how to do your stuff already. You know, at least for me, I know how to do what I need to do inside that ring. Um, but I, I get my 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 physical through you know strength and conditioning and all of that stuff. But at the same time, how strong my mind is built is 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 how strong I'm gonna be able to fight. Do you think that you don't run because you're not an aggressive fighter? I know you get knockouts. I'm aggressive, man. But you're more of a counter puncher. <laughs> you wouldn't call yourself a counter puncher? I I, I, I call myself a counter puncher, but puncher. But I do have to get in to that level of 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 uh, the the hit zone. But your heart rate is more relaxed than a margarito, hypothetically, because he's coming at you, and it's like, yeah, yeah. you're you're waiting, boom, and you check left hook someone. You're right. you know you're waiting for that shot. Yeah. So you're more pace. You're it's like thinking where the you know I feel like the aggressive fighter he already knows what he's got to do. You're in the ring figuring it out, looking for the opening. The aggressive fighter he just wants they to just be all over there. you. Yeah, right, you right, know right. I and mean? I, I know what you're talking about. You know, um, I am a counter puncher. Um, you know, but I do sit up. The, but when I do train, because um, I have a lot of data for years of data, um, how high my heart rate goes in training, and it's always about two o three, two o five. You know. So um, when it comes down to what do you intensity, use an Apple Watch or you got like that? I got the I Garmin. Got, yeah, I got the Sunto. I've always oh. used the Sunto for since 2008. I would say, you know. So I have all the data from how, um, in terms of changing diets. You know, when I was in keto, my heart rate was at 215 or 211. You know, um, because I, I was just I was just sustaining a lot of uh, a lot of energy going mm -hmm. into it. You know, but I did feel that my power power wasn't as strong. You know, um, so I went back to a, a hybrid type of, of diet, which is keto and, and, and glucose at the same time. Do you fast at all? I do a lot of fasting. That's From what I what do. From what times to what time? So for me, I think this is because I've read a lot of I've read a lot of studies about fasting, you know, and, and I think this is why I can make any kind of weight because I can fast for a long time. Um, the, the longest I've ever done is seven days, but I feel like I could do more. Um, but on 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 a uh, on a um, on a camp, I would do Sunday. I'll eat at night because Monday I'll spar. But that the last time I'll eat on that week um, is is Sunday, and then Monday I don't eat. I'll spar though. I'll have all the strength. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night I'll eat because I'll start our spar on Friday, and then I'll, I'll I'll eat on on the weekdays, and then go back that cycle again. Wait, so you're fasting for? Days at a time with nothing at all? With just water. Sometimes I'll put a, a, a coffee in it. Oh, so it's not like a 10-hour, 12-hour fast No, it was day. like nothing. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Wow. The mo the no, most that's, uh, you know, uh, that's actually is, I mean, I'm sure he would know, but I think that's how, where it started. It's more religious, or at least that's how I learned it. You know, um, religious fasting are for seven consecutive days yeah. with nothing but water, water you know. yeah. What I do is like no fasting for ten or twelve hours a day, only water. Oh, so that's you know, inter black intermittent coffee. fasting. Intermittent fasting. Yeah. So okay. you got the intermittent fasting, which is great too, because your body goes into autophagy, which is um, a process in our system that goes into uh, into cleanup crew. You know, they're the cleanup crew. So all the the bad cells, or the damaged cells, or the dead cells, they kind of recycle all that to create new cells, and and that's why uh, fasting is such a great way of of, of healing because. Um, you're pretty much giving your time. There's no more digesting. Your your body's not working to digest food anymore, but your body's working to heal your body. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I feel like I'm I'm still 21, man. <laughs> how do you how do go. you how do you feel uh, training during during? That's a what fast. I was gonna ask. Do you do you do um, fasted cardio? Yeah, I don't oh, wow. I don't have anything in it. You know, I, I, again that's why I put coffee in there. But again, the Monday I'm, I have all the energy because I ate before, right? So I, 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 that's what I want to be at is, is to be able to perform in that ring uh, at 100%. And that's why Fridays and Monday and Friday is, is or the night before is where I eat. Mm -hmm. But during those times that I'm fasting, I don't, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm still training hard. You know, I do feel on a Tuesday, I'm still good. On a Wednesday, when I start to slow down a little bit, I, you know, my body is, is, is weaker than, 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 than normal. But I'm, I'm all right with that. So I'm using a lot of strat strategic uh, training and stuff like that. But uh, on a Thursday, you know, that's where I'm at my lowest. 
And then that night I'll eat, you know. And again, you don't want to go in and eat all kinds of crap, you know. You start off with like soup and, and, and vegetables and stuff like that. And so you can, uh, you know, for me, I, I, I eat meat the, the, the night before a spar or a fight. Because data-wise, that's why I perform um, the, best. Be the best. Yeah. Um, since you spoke about sauna use, I don't know if you heard that the BBFC has uh, stepped in and uh, they're going to try and stop the Casimero fight from happening, allegedly, for improper use of the sauna. Have you ever heard of anything like that in the States? And what is improper use of the sauna? That, that's, that, that, you, you get me, man. I, I'm, I'm confused with that stuff because, I mean, everybody uses sauna. You know, everybody uses sauna. I mean, what do they call sauna? I mean, if you have a sauna suit, is that part of it too? You know, I mean, I it, it's... It's, they they even have those portable saunas now that right. we saw a lot of yeah, fighters. Yeah, it's like a zip up, right? Yeah, I have yeah. one of those. I mean, every time you know, I bring it every, everywhere, like when I fought in L.A., I, yeah. I brought it with me. I sit there, you know, especially with COVID and in the, in the protocols and stuff like that. I couldn't go into the sauna at that time when they used to shut everything down. You know, we sit, we sit. I bought this thing and I sit there for like hours, you know, and I lose weight. You did know? you? Did you um have to implement things such as this sauna? That you weren't doing before the pandemic, but the pandemic kind of forced you to maybe add things to your regimen, to your plant, to your training plan. I mean, um, it was always easy for me because the way my body works, but because of the fact that I do fast in in my training camps, um, I, you know, I've always just kind of rolled with the punches. You know, I never really thought of things. I just kind of figure out that I do need saunas, and if I couldn't do it, I got to figure out how to do it. In in you know. Like sometimes we'd we'd uh, in in the amateur days we'd go in 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 the in the bathroom turn on the heat you know the shower and we're shadow shadow boxing in there you know we were wow. figuring something like that you know that's that was that was uh you know we shut everything down it was it was like a sauna it was a steam mm -hmm, room mm -hmm. you know so but we've done that we've done that all all throughout my career even in the amateur days. I mean, you got to have some tricks of the trade to still be making the weight that you're making at the age that you're making at. And I don't mean that you're old, just in general. Like, you know, it's easier to be lighter when you're younger. Uh, right. But we got Rue in the 504. We do have questions from the people. This is New Orleans. He says, what do you say to the doubters as you continue to remain at the elite level of the division? Well, just keep watching. You know, <laughs> I mean, one thing I've had in my life is doubters. You know, all everybody always have their doubters, you know. And I welcome that. I welcome that because we, it challenges us. But for me, I just want to let them say, you know, I'll just say that, you know, just keep watching because you'll see more, you know, and, 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 and just keeps, it just keeps me going at the same time. So I'm grateful for them too. Um, actually, before I move on, since you uh, said that, is it in the back of your mind to maybe outdo Bernard in age? Because, <laughs> bro, Bernard was like 54 or some shit. Nah, he was 49, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so 10, 10, more know, 10, years, 10 more years. 10 more years. Now, you know, I, it's, it's, it's this. I don't ever really compete myself with anybody or, or put that place. You know? I, I got a, a, mo a model in my head. But however my mind or my body says that, hey, you're done, bro, then I'm good. You know, but when it comes down to it, if I can keep going, if I can push it further and further, I'm going to do it. You know, but uh, if, if my one day I'm just going to be like, man, I, I don't, just don't have it in me anymore. Then I'm done. Absolutely. All right. We got another one coming in from New York Bullet. Thank you for being on the show and much respect. Do you have a top three favorite victories of your career that are your personal favorite? Um, I'm going to say for me, Darchinian, Fernando Montiel. Ooh, which other big, exciting win? Oh, my God. I'm stuck on the third one. Who do you got? <laughs> um, uh, th those two definitely is the first The first one, the, the Darchin, because that was my very first one. And then the Montiel was was uh, was just one of my rights. I think that know? one put you on the map. Yeah. Because yeah. the way you iced them, it just went viral back right. then. Right. So those two definitely... Um, the third one, I mean, there's a lot of great fights. Um, I can't even think of off the top of my head, man. You know, but I, I would have to say the Nishioka one because it, it had a lot of meaning for me. Oh, you know? uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It had yeah. a lot of meaning for me, you know, because that wasn't that, that a unification? That was, I think. Uh, for, yeah, that was, and um, you know, it just had a lot of meaning for me because during that time, um, I thought that was that was it for me. You know, I mean, if you look at if you look back in the telecast, they were saying Nonito is contemplating about retirement after this fight. You know, but 
somehow, some way, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, man. Sam, you know? I, I, I'm curious because, man, you fought everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. I'm talking about. No, the definition of a world champion, no, for real. Everywhere. Um, I want to know what location was the most memorable for you. I mean, and I'm, I'm going to take the Philippines out because I can only imagine what's, <laughs> what it's like fighting at home. But, I mean, you fought in freaking Guam. Like, I didn't know people lived in Guam other than, like, military members. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Um, man, I, you well, know. What was your favorite fight or, like, place to fight at? I mean, you know, you can't go outside of the U.S., um, Japan was fun. Japan was fun because I, I've always been connected. Uh, you know, when I was, you know, when I was growing up, um, I was an anime kid. You know, mm. I love why because I didn't, I couldn't go out. I couldn't really do anything. You know, my dad was like, "You're gonna stay home. You're gonna go to the gym. You're going to uh, school." You know, so that was my thing. So going to Japan and 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 just enjoying and, and just watching all this other stuff that I kind of saw during, uh, you know, during my my childhood was was fun for me. It's kind of crazy to think because it took for Inoue, out of all the fights in your career, that was your first fight in Japan, right? Yeah, I mean, I've been to Japan a couple of times. They've invited me and stuff like that, but that was the first time. That's crazy. Now, uh, June 7th, go, going back and doing it again um, has to be special to go back, right? It's going to be very, very special. <laughs> it's going to be very, very special. Um, you know, we're just mentally ready for it, um, but to go back, you know, and... and I've always enjoyed it out there, so, you know. That's amazing. June 7th, we can't wait. Yep, I got some more still from the people here. We got Alejandro Vega in Florida. No question. I just want to show my appreciation for what you've shown inside the squared circle, showing what it is to be a true teammate by having your wife in your corner. Much respect to you as a father. So... Just showing you no, love, thank champ. you, thank you, thank you, brother. Appreciate that, man. That's all we can do for ourselves, man. Is do the best that we can. You know, don't waste any moments and time um, idling. Uh, we got Dual Ingram in Compton that says, "What does the title of old mean to you?" I don't believe in it. You know, I don't believe in it. Um, I think my mind now is is I'm getting into a lot of spirituality and stuff like that. And I just started to see. That time is is it, you know we we are we are, I guess when we start to believe in it is when we start to in- inherit it in our body, you know. Um, for me at this time, like a couple years ago, a few uh, about four, four or five years ago, um, you know, a few years ago, I used to wake up with aches and pain, mm. you know. And then I started doing my fasting. I started doing all this other healthy stuff, you know. And and somehow some way I'm performing even more stronger than I did. I, I, my best in you know in 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 the in the books you know i i do feel that i'm even better in terms of stamina i'm better with with power as well you know i'm I'm back you know and and when it comes down to it i don't see age as, as something that's relevant i think it's more of the mindset now mm. i have scott the christian fight fan What's up, champ? Thank you for blessing the best boxing podcast on the planet, TBV. There is no doubt in my mind that you will be the first Ballot Hall of Famer once you're done. If you're successful against the monster, who will you be gunning for next? Well, there's 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 uh there's another belt on that. You know, again, my goal is um is becoming undisputed, you know, and I'm doing it this year. Did you always have the goal of undisputed, or now because that's become the new hot thing amongst the male boxers, is that something you feel like I, I can I might as well go ahead and accomplish that before I hang it up? No, that's that's something that that one, that's the only thing I I have not accomplished. I mean, I've done everything else: become fight of the year, knockout of the year, fight of the year. Um, uh, you know, all of that stuff, you know, multi-division. Unified, unified, multi-division right. champion. That's the only thing that I don't have. I even have the award as the Mr. Nice Guy Award, mm. <laughs> you know. In, in, you First know, so. person, <laughs> you're the, also, you know, I don't know if they've given you an award, but you deserve one for being, I believe, the first person to do 365-day VADA testing as well. You right. started that I whole started movement. That. And, uh, you know, others followed suit. You know, Floyd gets a lot of credit for being the guy to, you know, uh, implement drug testing, but you were doing VADA 365 year round from the beginning. Yep. So credit to you for that, for helping enforce uh, and, and, and encourage other people to be on the clean boxing program. We got 
James Valdez in San Antonio, Texas, he says, if you could rematch one of your older defeats, who would it be and why that particular fighter? Let's do them all. Why not? <laughs> you know, you know um, I, would, I, would say, I would say the Rigondeaux one because um, I, I, I felt, I mean, not to take anything away from him, I felt that just the mental was just um, not on the same level. You know, the moment after I, I fought um, uh, Nishoka, you know, and, and the contemplation of retirement, the mindset wasn't there. You know, I, train, I still train hard. I still train hard. But it wasn't, it wasn't to the level where, where I was taking my due diligence, which is to study the fight. It was just more of like, I'm just going to try to land a big punch, mm. you know. So I, I'd like to have that rematch. And, and, you know, and I wish him the best, by the way, because I know something happened to him. You know, I wish him the best. Hopefully he recovers and stuff like that because that's that's something that's kind of messed up to happen to a fighter, you know. Yeah, I don't know if he's coming back to, to boxing after that, champ. I mean, they said a pressure cooker blew up in his face. To my Rigo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, he showed signs of recovery on his Instagram wearing glasses, but I don't know. They said that definitely he had uh, the potential of losing up to 80% of his sight because of that yeah. pressure cooker. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. That, I think that would be great. I mean, he's a great, great fighter, man. Great fighter, very slick. A lot of people don't like his style because of the way he does things. But you know, for 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 the for the sweet signs, he does well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have catastrophic havoc. What should we expect to see from you in your next fight? I'd love to see your see you victorious, and with that giant win, will that be your career finale, or will we see you? Excuse me. Will we see more of Donaire? I think you'll see more uh, of, of me. Of course, you, you want know, that unification. I mean, you want, I want undisputed. I want, I want. I want to become undisputed, and then of course, there's there's uh, there's the fifth division. You know, at one fifteen, that we can try to go or or just keep going. Wow. To uh to to go up with with Fulton or or, or who wow. Else, you know, so with I, Fulton. I, I, I like I said, man, I fight everybody, and I always will fight everybody. Wow, Fulton would love that, I'm sure, because, you know, you're a legendary name. Like the last person said, you know, first ballot Hall of Fame, uh, it should be. Um, we got hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Fulton got you, but 115 got me, uh, champ. <laughs> Some legendary names at 15 right yeah, now. Yeah, Chocolatito. I, that's what I wanted. That, I didn't, that, uh, but know, then I, you guys announced the monster fight. After I seen his fight, I'm like, man, you and him would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I mean, we, we, you know, we tried to have uh, a negotiation with, with Chocolatito's team and, and, uh, and, uh, El Gallo Estrada's team as well. So, oh, wow. you know, I just, just those, those two, it was just, you no, know, those two was my time, you know, um, it was just always kind of this way, you know, so when, when you say, you, when you say you try to have negotiations instead of this fight, like in place of this fight, you well, were trying to make when, it happen or when, when there wasn't, there was an uncertainty and stuff like that. We wanted different options, Okay, you know, and, and we're, we're grateful that we got this fight. You know, I'm really grateful for, uh, Mr. Honda making this fight and, and, uh, Richard Schaefer. Uh, for for allowing this fight to happen, you know, the negotiating with them too, and and making it happen, you know. So I'm I'm grateful for that. We got uh, Adrian Hernandez that says, "What's going on, champ? Watching you knock out Montiel made me fall in love with the sport. <laughs> what would you do differently if the Inoue rematch happened?" Oh, there's a lot, a lot of things to do differently. You know, um, just overall, I came in there the last time I came in there to fight. This time I come in there to uh, I'm coming in there to win the fight, you know. Meaning mm. that all my arsenal is gonna be ready, all my my strategy is gonna be ready, you know. One thing that I did in the past, in the last fight was, you know, I came in there just to fight, you know, I came in there to just hit punches, you know. Um, this time I'm coming in there with 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 intensity, with with strategy, with you name it, man. So <laughs> I'm just excited, man. Mm. You know, this is the fight I've been waiting for. What, um. After the first fight with the monster, right, with the no way, what was your thoughts after? Because I felt like, I remember being one of those people that set their alarm to wake up in the middle of the <laughs> night to watch it. But I remember, like, everybody was overlooking you that fight. Nobody yeah. was giving you the slightest bit of chance. And no way was on a tear up to that point. And then you put up a fight, and you put up a great fight, and it's a close fight, and it goes a decision what was your your mindset after the fight man right after the right after i got out the ring i went to the locker room and i'm like just sat down and i'm like i can beat him mm. that was it i can beat him 
you know. And and after that, I got back into the gym, like like after a little vacation after that fight, maybe about two or three weeks. Got back to the gym and and, and just started to get really obsessed with 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 uh, beating them. Mm, obsessed. So, do you feel like, yeah, you've had two fights, two victories since, but everything was a step closer to this rematch. Is I, is that how you looked at it? Well, it was it was it was putting myself in there. You know, I tried to just get in the rematch, but it wasn't gonna happen, right? So, um, I need to get to that step. You know, and and beating Obali was one of them because uh, perhaps you know he had something to do with it because he wanted to beat him because Obali beat his brother. Mm. You know, so and I was able to do that, so um, that took notice, I, I think. But ultimately, I think one thing too is is he wanted that fight as well because of 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 how the fight was. You know, when he ran over everybody, I was the one that that was a wall that he you know that he barely could climb. Mm. No, I yeah, like how you said that barely. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> everybody was expecting him to steamroll everybody, and you gave him a very exciting fight. Uh, we have one more from Israel Weber who says, Just send in love for you being in a fight that should make the shortlist for being the best fight of the decade. Lunch and dinner on me whenever you're next in Oklahoma. There you go. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Oklahoma. I, 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 I've been to Oklahoma once, I think. You know, I think I got some families there that came in to visit. So I'm, I, might, I might be out there, man. You uh -huh. know, I might be out there, you know. Shout out, Izzy. <laughs> uh, but those are all our questions. Any Super Chats might have came in? Uh, questions me, for yes, us? Yes, we do have some. We have uh, Noe in Dallas saying, huge fan with... Oh, with which one of your coaches from the past do you have your best memories with? I mean, you know, my pops has built me up from the beginning, you know. Um, but aside from that, you know, I would say Robert Garcia because he was like a brother to me, you know. Robert was just, I mean, we're still really cool, you know. So I always support his fighter. So Robert's been, uh, it's, it's, it's like a family to me. Absolutely. We got Alex Corona saying, I was happy that you got your payback against Vic for beating your brother. Um, that's all he said. So obviously, <laughs> fire you. emojis. Yeah, yeah, thank you, champ. I couldn't think. Uh, that's been your only rematch up to this point in your career. D'Artagnan. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah that was. The, I, I thought it's, so. It's so funny because I I had an interview once, and you know, it was a Japanese interview, and he's like, "Yeah, have you had any rematch? You know, uh, how's it feel to rematch uh, Inoue?" He's like, "I don't think I've ever had one." I'm like, "Oh yeah, wait, I did have one. That was D'Artagnan." <laughs> It was like 07 and then like, what was it, like 2012 maybe? 15 or something. Oh, wow. 2014. Yeah. Years later. Brandon Lenz from Houston says, thanks for coming on the show, champ. As a person who also used fasting for weight loss, I'm interested to know which method of fasting did you find most effective? And by effective, I mean most weight loss in the shortest amount of time. Well, definitely the the water fasting. The water fasting. I mean, I could lose ten pounds in like two days. What's water fasting? That all you do is is eat, uh, drink water. That's it. But that's, but that's for else. days at a time. Yeah. That's yeah yeah. Wow. So again, I, I and would, you worked out. And a workout. That's the thing is, I work out, and I, I I like to see where my mindset is. I think a lot of it is 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 getting my mind to to uh to um to to to, to control my body. You know, when my body is saying no, my, my, my mind is like, you know what, I got, I got you, I got you. We're going to keep pushing, you know, and, and this is why even though uh, um, how tough fights can be, I'm always going to be standing or at least I'm going to get up, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do it. You, you drop me, I'm going to get up, you know, mm. as many times, you know, so that's just how I am because I think I built my mindset through fasting and all the training that I do. I built my mindset that my body is not going to control me. So from here you're going to the gym, or because I think you said eleven, right? You usually well, in the gym at eleven. Yeah, Thursday is my off day, oh. so I'm sparring tomorrow. Oh. Usually I'm fasting this time, so I'll start fasting next week, and I, I go from there. I mean, it's it's, it's very simple for me because I've done it for for years on now. So, champ, uh, when do you get into Japan for your fight? Well, I, I just actually had talk with Mr. Honda yesterday. You know, because um, he came in town um, and we had a little bit of lunch. And we were just kind of seeing how things are going to work, how things are going to look, because I have to be there early on because there's, there might be quarantines and stuff like that. Oh. And that plus the time, the time difference, you know, so I'll probably come in a little bit early and then, you know, maybe set up a couple sparrings in there for the last uh, the last week. 
Okay. And it's a weird day because it's a Tuesday. I mean, for a lot of people, it's a weird day. But for me, I've never fought on a Tuesday, but I, I grew up watching Tuesday Night Fighting. Uh, we got Coach Myers that says, did you ever want to avenge the Regal loss after it happened, or did Top Rank want you to go a different direction? Well, it was, it was um, we, wanted, we wanted that fight right away, you know, but it was just more of like, I was on, on a space where, eh, mm, you know, am I done with this? But then I was just like... So you did have a rematch clause? No, we didn't have a rematch oh. clause. We didn't have a rematch clause, so... Um, that's something that I just don't have in my, uh, in, 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 in my contract. contracts yeah. ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a rematch clause. Holy smokes. Yeah. It was just more of like, you know what? I believe in me, <laughs> you know, nah, hey, you bet you on know? yourself. Yeah. So, um, and again, a part of it, I put myself in that because mentally I don't, you know, I want to put, it's like, it's like the, the saying, you know, when, when you take over, you know, uh, an Island, you know, you burn all the ship, you know, you, you just don't think of going back, you know, you just go in there and, and, and take over. Tim, I'm, I'm, that I'm, is the last one, but I I, I gotta ask, or they wouldn't I wouldn't be who I am. Any fear that the fight doesn't happen? Any fear that um, what's surrounding Probellum and MTK affects you and your career at this stage? Obviously, with the U.S. Uh, putting a sanction on Daniel Kinahan, many people are speculating that Probellum and MTK are somehow linked. How are you feeling with that? And if you decide no comment, I understand. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really no comment because I don't really know what the whole situation is. Um, all I am is if if things happen, that means it was meant to happen. You know, it's not gonna bother me. I mean, I'm not in for oh I I need to fight or oh I I got I gotta make money or the I just you know if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't. All I know is I'm gonna keep pursuing to get that that belt. That's that's my that's my only goal. You know, and again, I did have that obsession of beating Inoue, and and that's what I'm going to do. Champ, obviously, so, you. So just to be clear, you never met Daniel Keenahan? No, I, I don't even know who he is. When okay. when when people ask me, um, do I do you know about this person? I'm like, who? You know, I thought he said Darren Kenny. I'm like, I was going to spar him. Darren you know? Cunningham? Yeah. <laughs> or not? No, I swear to God, I swear. You remember yeah. who Darren Cunningham? He wasn't here. He wasn't oh here. Oh my there. god! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, you know, he was because, here. He wanted to fight Mickey Bay because Mickey Bay was his trainer, and he lost the fight with Mickey Bay being the trainer. He said Mickey Bay, you know, froze under the lights. He's like, I want to fight him. That was an epic interview. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Mickey Mickey Bay, man, um, in the amateurs, you know, in the amateurs. But yeah, that the first thing that popped in my head because my wife was talking to some <laughs> reporters, like, and he's like, "Who? Kenningham?" I'm like, "Do they want to spar?" Because they've asked me to spar. You know, but I'm like, but he doesn't have the style. So that's what we we're talking about, you know. And then <laughs> it's like, hilarious. I don't know who that person is, you know, when they, you know. So, yeah, I don't, I've never met the guy. And if I did, I wouldn't know because I, I you know, it just didn't, you know. I don't didn't think register. I, I, yeah. You're good because we got another super chat came in from Corona. Oh, you could. Oh, another one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, he says, congrats on the monster fight and hope you bring them straps home. And thanks for coming on TBV. Fire emoji a bunch of times with a bunch of gloves. Uh, those are my last. You have anything? Yeah, champ. I just I just wanted to know, like at this point in your career, thirty nine years old, multi division champion, first battle Hall of Famer, no question. Outside of because you talked about wanting to be undisputed, that's the one thing you haven't. Mm. But when it like when it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered as? You know, um, there's 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 a part of me now that that I feel like I'm here. Um, for, for a particular reason, you know, one thing is I want to help people out, you know, I want to help uh, the fighters out, you know, especially with my wife and, and knowing the, what she goes through in the contracts and all this other stuff. Because a lot, you know, when I came in to sign the, the, uh, the you know, back in the days before I met her, I, I just signed everything, <laughs> you know, it was just like one of those kids. And then that's something I want to give to the fighters is value themselves and not be, not be screwed, you know, but um, I think I want to be remembered as a person that inspire other people. You know, I, I think that's that's more meaningful to me, and my, my kids can look into it. That my that's that's my papa. My papa was, was a great a great fighter. Not only a great fighter, but he inspired people. Definitely an inspiration to us all, Champa. Uh, beyond grateful to have you sitting here with Absolutely. us. Absolutely, and uh, thank you, you so much. You know, we can't wait. We hope we hope that a um, a, a magic little fairy redirects our flight from Australia and takes <laughs> us to Japan for your fight because yeah, I've uh, never been to Japan. Definitely never oh, you been. You love it, man. You love it. Yeah, you know, so. It's, it's so different. You know, it just, it's, it's very dynamic. Actually, before you go, 
I'm being told I should not let you leave without having you sing the Mexican national anthem. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I, <laughs> I fought so many Mexican, uh, you know, and, and I grew up with a lot of Mexicans. So, you know, I'm going to say, Mexicanos a grito de guerra. Yo, that's yeah. what's up. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Tim. Yo. <laughs> to everybody out there, you know, uh, uh, keep healthy, keep safe, man. Do your best. Always, you always have the choice for yourself. Make that choice for yourself. No one else is making that choice but you. So uh, take care, be blessed, and thank you for having me here again, guys. Thank you guys you. are awesome. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take this into mission. Please give out any social media if anybody crazy enough not to be following you, and then we'll go take this picture. All right. Uh, Nonito Donaire on, on Instagram um, and a Filipino Flash on Twitter. And then my YouTube, and new YouTube is, is Beyond, the, Beyond the Ring with Nonito and Re Rachel. That's me and my wife. We're talking about boxing. We're talking about life. We're talking about everything. So follow me on there, too. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank All you, right. champ. Viva Mexico, cabrones! For the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, or promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.